Ward, Miss Bennett, do y'all need to chat on SOTO, et cetera? No, Judge, we had um, a mediation last, um, was it the 6th? No, not the 16th. Recently, we had a mediation where we didn't settle. Um, and so I, I think that we're just ready for uh, for trial, Judge. Okay. Um, while I'm remembering this, Miss uh, Miranda Beltron is here on the screen. She's one of the placements. And the Galaxy Note is Miss Minerva Smith. She's also one of the placements. Um, the children, for the record, are Miss Rhonda, Mr. Bradley, Catalia, Logan, uh, two boys and two girls. And they're not here, obviously. They're um, represented by Miss Susan Potts, who is their attorney in Latham. And Miss Donna Shahan is their CASA. And her supervisor is Miss Andrea Welch. Um, the mom of all four children is Samantha, Samantha Soto Franco. She is not here. Her attorney is Miss Carrie Ward, and she's here. Um, the unknown father of Catalia and Logan is not here. Um, he is alleged unknown father of those two children. Uh, his, their attorney, Angela Dowdle, filed a report. Uh, with the court according to today, according to Ms. Vanna, and she is excused from her appearance. The report, Ms. Vanna, does the report set forth her efforts to try to locate the unknown father in this case? Yes, Judge. Okay. Um, let's see. The mom, I have that Ms. Samantha Soto Franco was served on 4 11 22. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And she's also made some appearances here as Ms. Ward's been here all the time. The, right. fa the father of um, Rhonda's and Bradley's is, is Mr. Dustin Maynard. He is not here. I had that he was served on four, personally served on 4 6 22. Is that correct, Ms. Van? Yes, Judge. And um, he's not here, but his lawyer, Ms. Uh, Michelle Cummings, is here. Um, let me see. Miss Ward, you filed a motion for extension, correct? I did, Your Honor. Okay, let's go on. And everybody's been sworn. I'm going to make sure we have a witness, but we'll get to him first. Let's, Miss Ward, let's go on and hear your motion for extension, please. Your Honor, my client has disabilities. Um, her, <clears throat> her IQ is substantially low. Um, falling into the intellectually disabled uh, category. She does require additional assistance. Um, and it, it seems like it would be a reasonable accommodation to add additional time to this case. She has made some improvements to her home. She has made effort in this case. It's not a total lack of effort. Um, it, it seems that additional time could give her time to engage in those services and um, and potentially make the changes necessary to have the children return to her home. Um, and, I, and I do think that that would be something reasonable to do, especially in light of the fact that um, Stephanie is, of course, her infant that is involved in another case. We're all still going to be here um, for the next five or six months anyway in that, in that case. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Van, I'm happy to hear from you. Um, Judge, are, we're just... I would call a witness, but it'll be the same witness for the final trial. So if it's OK, I'll just make an argument um, if that's OK with the court. Yes, ma'am. Judge, I understand that um, Ms. Ward would like to see um, an extension in this case um, and sees that that might be a reasonable accommodation for Ms. Um, Samantha Soto Franco. Um, due to her low IQ. However, um, I believe that, and if the court needs to hear testimony, that the testimony would show that the department has gone um, above and beyond in this case, offering um, to schedule appointments, to drive her to appointments. Um, we've even had a mediated settlement agreement that was tailored to the needs of Ms. Soto Franco. Um, the evidence would also show through testimony that we had a final trial that was accelerated, um, and that was we moved it back to the original date um, after we went to mediation. Since mediation, um, the evidence would show that Ms. Franco Soto has actually been doing worse. So as more time goes on, the less she's doing. Um, she's not participating. She's not drug testing. She's not um, participating in any services. And so I don't believe that um, I don't believe that the extension is appropriate in this case. And I don't believe that there are um, extraordinary circumstances to warrant an extension, Judge. 
Okay. Uh, Ms. Cummings, what would you like to add? Your Honor, I don't have a position as I my client has been unresponsive and not involved since the beginning of the case. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Shahan, what is your opinion? Um, I agree with um, everything that, that was said, that she hasn't participated. She hasn't um, done anything that she's supposed to do. And I don't feel like the, in the best interest of the kids is what we need to be thinking about. And going, she has no place, they have no place to go to that's safe. And um, she's not doing her service plan. She's had plenty of time, in my opinion, to do that. Um, she's not... Um, showing up for court. She's not showing up for, well, she did show up for mediation, but she was very late. And um, I just think the kids have issues after they visit with the mom. And I'm just not sure that it would ever work out with the mom. She was late for mediation, like an hour and a half, an hour and 20 minutes late for mediation. So I feel like um, she's she's just not doing anything that takes her back. Um, uh, it's just the kids have issues after they visit with her, and they're all places right now. And I think what we need to think about is what's in the best interest of the kids. And I feel like that is um, not being with her. And I don't feel like if we extend if we extend it, I don't think it's going to change anything. We, we know. <laughs> Anybody have any questions of Ms. Shahan? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Just for, for just for Ms. Potts, just for the motion purposes. That's correct. And and I think this goes to the, the need for permanency and whether or not the motion should be granted. Ms. Shahan, can you tell us the reactions of the children after their visits with the mother? Um, they just have very behavioral issues. Um, Rhonda is very bonded to um, Miranda and I feel like she she just freaks out after, when she has a visit with mom um, and Bradley I'm not sure that it's it affects him as much as it does the other two and they just have some major behavioral issues after the visits with mom Especially, uh, especially Layla, Leia, because she's afraid that if um, she goes back to mom, that she's going to uh, be having to keep the little kids like she did in the past. Did the two older children or one of the two older children have a physical response? Do you recall? I don't recall that. Thank you. Anything else, Ms. Potts? No, Your Honor, thank you, other than argument whenever it's appropriate. Okay, anybody else have any questions, Ms. Shahan? Just briefly, Your Honor. Um, okay. Ms. Shahan, um, isn't it true that Bradley is not currently in a an adoptive placement or a placement that intends to adopt? That's correct. Okay, I have to win it. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a follow-up to that question, if okay. I can. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Shahan, are there any plans for um, adoptive parents for Bradley? Yes. Uh, we actually um, went with a visit with the kids um, a couple of weeks ago, and we met up with uh, the two possible adoptive that parents that are, pardon me, that, that are, are willing to, that are willing to take him, the connection with them was, fabulous and um so yes there is a plan no further questions just some follow-up your honor okay <laughs> once moved they can't adopt for six months is that right i'm sorry i didn't hear the beginning of that once he's moved to this adoptive placement the adoption cannot be consummated for six months right yes and so couldn't that six months be used during an extension? Uh, yes, it could be. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Ms. Shahan, was uh, the, the possible adoptive parents you're referring to, is that the two gentlemen that were named in the report? Yes. 
Okay. Ms. Potts, what, what do you think about uh, the motion for extension? Your Honor, I understand the needs uh, for reasonable accommodations. I believe they've been made in this case. The service plan was specifically tailored um, to meet the needs of the mother in this case. Um, Ms. Henry has provided rides. She's provided all kinds of options, all kinds of support. And I believe that the ADA has been met um, in this circumstance. In addition, the motion was filed very, very late and just right before trial. The children need permanency. Um, they are having serious problems after their visits. And I think they need to know where their where their long-term home is and where it's gonna be. And I think the couple that Ms. Shahan referred to, um, Bradley was very, very um, good with them. They were good together. Their interactions were good together. I just think the children need some permanency and that it's time. I, If the mother was doing more to try, I would be all about an extension, but she really doesn't seem to be putting forth those efforts, even when rides and special services and accommodations are offered by the department. She's still not participating. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Potts, let me answer this question. What do and Miss Miss Ward brought it up. It's a, it's a good point. Uh, what do you think about the baby Stephanie? I know, no, she's a new baby. She's an infant. What about her case being on this time frame and these four kiddos being on a different time frame and all that that goes with having two cases pending at the same time? Um, Judge, I don't think it would make a difference in the mother's efforts to complete her services. I think it's more about a capacity to parent with the 63 IQ. She's not going to ever be able to, I don't believe, get that done. And I think that's what the psychological shows. So, I mean, it would be better if, if we could group them all together. But if the court prefers to provide that time, that's fine. Okay. Okay, um, I'm going to deny the motion for extension. So, uh, Miss Fanny, you can call your first witness, please. Officer Calafero, well, you, you were sworn previously, correct? Officer Calafero, can you please unmute yourself? And Officer Talaferro, are you? how are you employed? Patrol Sergeant in the City of Granite Shoals. Okay, and how long have you been um, employed there? Here, a little over three years. Okay. And are you familiar with um, Dustin Allen Maynard? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are you familiar with a Samantha Soto Franco? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And can you tell me, have you had recent interactions with uh, these two people? Yes, ma'am, we have. Okay. And when is the, when did you last have interactions with them? Uh, the last interaction is not, is actually not, um, uh, it was the 17th, but what we're going to be referring to was on the 16th, I believe. Okay. And um, on March 16th, um, how did you, was there a call out for your assistance? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And do you know who made that phone call? I do not know. It was a, a passerby from the residence. Apparently they were fighting in the front yard. Okay. And when you say there, who are you referring to? Uh, Dustin Maynard and Miss uh, Soto Franco. Okay. And do you know at which address they were fighting? Uh, yeah. Okay. And do you remember about the time uh, that the call was made or that you had interactions with them? Uh, the call was made at about 5.20 p.m. and we got there about 5.25 p.m. Okay. And um, what was going on when you showed up? Uh, when we got there, Miss... Uh, Soto Franco was in the front yard. She was visibly upset. Um, Mr. Maynard was inside the residence. We had to call him out. He came out. Um, he had said, stated that he'd been sleeping. Miss um, Soto Franco woke him up because she was upset because they don't have electricity now because he's not making enough money. Um, and he claims that she was yelling at him and um, uh, she claims he pushed her. Um, he had scratches on his back, but he claimed that they were from weed eating. I don't know how that happens, but anyway, I asked her if the uh, contact when she was pushed was unwanted. She said it was unwanted, and so he was placed under arrest. Okay, and um, so at that time you arrested um, him? Yes, ma'am. Okay, did she have any visible marks on her that you saw? She did not. 
Okay. Um, and then you stated that you had interactions with either Dustin or, or Samantha on the 17th of March as well. We did. Her, her stepfather came to the police department. Um, I guess there's some kind of falling out with him, uh, the stepfather and, and Miss Soto Franco, and he didn't want her at the residence anymore. Uh, apparently mom didn't mind if she was there, so there was really nothing we could do. But I wasn't present, but from my understanding, within the last couple of days, she was just through the criminal. No hearsay. What was what was he getting ready to say? Again, I couldn't hear it. He was talking about. He said whatever it was. He said he wasn't there, and so okay. then I just did the hearsay. Okay, sustain. Okay. Um, no further questions. Miss Ward, any questions of Officer Talaferro? So this incident on the 16th was um, March 16th of 2023? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Officer Talaferro, have you been made any calls to this residence in the past? Uh, I don't believe so. I don't believe when they resided there. I have previously, but not when they were there. Okay. Do you know uh, Miss Soto Franco or Mr. Maynard? Yes, I've dealt with them. You've dealt with them? Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. And what was that capacity? Uh, this time, well, obviously the uh, the incident of the resident with the assault, but other than that, um, with her, with Miss uh, Soto Franco and her stepdad and her mom uh, not getting along most of the time. Okay. Who... Uh, to the best of your uh, knowledge, who lives at this home where you y'all were called to? Uh, my knowledge is just Mr. Uh, Dustin Maynard and Samantha Soto Franco. Okay. How does it appear from the street? Uh, not too terrible, considering. <laughs> I think considering it is relative, right? <laughs> right. It, it's it's not too bad outside. And you said that Mr. Maynard was arrested for uh, Class A? Family no, violence? Class C, assault by contact. Oh, assault by contact, okay. And I okay. did apply for an emergency protective ward. I don't know if that's granted or not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next witness, Ms. Vanna. Thank you, Judge. I will call Maria Henry. Ms. Henry, are you the CVS worker in this case? Yes. And how long have you been the CVS worker in this case? Uh, since the start of the case, um, back in April. Okay. Um, and can you explain to the court the reasons for the for the department's involvement with this family? Uh, yes, ma'am. Originally, they were um, CPS got involved because Leia uh, made some outcries in school that she had witnessed her mom stomping on the head of her baby brother and that now he was no longer in the home and that mom was looking for a place for the kids to go. So then once investigations was called out, they discovered that the condition of the home was deplorable and that there was in fact another child. I okay, object to hearsay regarding what the investigators uh, discovered. Judge, um, I'm going to argue that that is part of the department's um, record and, and Miss Maria Henry is also part of the department and has reviewed the records. Your Honor, that, that it's not being offered as a business record. There's no there's no record being offered. I wasn't given notice of any records being offered, um, and, and and I and I'm objecting that this is hearsay. There's an individual within the department who made these contacts. Um, whether they're still with the department or not, they could come and testify. Sustaining. Okay, so. Let's see. After your when you got involved, was that after TMC was granted? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so there is a court order, um, a temporary order following an adversary that um, had determined that it was in the best interest of the children to be removed. Um, and the department was granted TMC. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And have you been out to the home of Miss Samantha Soto? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And when you went out there, what did you observe? Uh, the first time that I met with her, uh, the home was um, needed a lot of work and it was infested with roaches and there was some holes or soft spots in the floor. Um, there were a few spots that I could see down 
down to the ground in the floor. Um, there was loose electrical in the outlets. A lot of most of the outlet covers didn't have outlets didn't have covers at all. Um, and there was an extension cord run from the wall all the way up the wall through the ceiling to to a light. Uh, one of the bathrooms was completely not functioning. It was be it was 100 percent under construction. Um, and the outside of the home, there was a lot of broken glass, pieces of wood, uh, large rusty nails in those pieces of wood. And there was a broken window on the back and the back steps. If you I actually had asked Miss um, Soto Franco to not go down the back stairs when I was visiting the home the first time because she was pregnant at that time and um, they were unstable. And uh, there was also the underpinning around the home. There were several pla- several places where it was sticking up and it had very sharp edges. Okay. And you had just testified that there were holes and soft, soft spots in the floors in the house. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And would you say that those, could somebody fall through those, through the holes? Yes. Okay. Could a child get, get stuck in one of the holes? Um, possible, possible, I would think more possibly like their limbs, if they were trying to retrieve something, um, and they and have some jagged edges. Okay. And when you stated that you could see to the bottom, what did you mean? Like, what could you see through the hole? You could see down to the ground underneath, just the, just underneath the trailer. Okay. And did you inspect the children's rooms? Yes, I did. Um, one of them, uh, she had replaced the carpet fully and it was much better, um, than initially I was expecting it to be. Uh, she said that originally there was, uh, animals in the home and that the pets belonged to her mother. So she had asked her mom not to have them in the house anymore so they could replace the carpet. So when I went, the carpet had been replaced in the living room and in two of two of the rooms, I believe. Uh, but there was still in one of them, um, you could still, there was still a strong smell of urine and, and feces, but mo- mostly urine. Um, but okay. they did have beds and that had been donated by the pregnancy center. Um, but they had still some, like I said, the outlet covers and it still had the strong aroma. Okay. And since that time, have you been back to the house? Uh, yes, ma'am. I went back out to the house on in November, probably mid-November, and inspected the home at that time. And and she did, I will say, did make some improvements at that time. Um, when I went in, I didn't see any roaches as I had previously. Um, and there, they had cleaned up in the back. So some of the, um, the back area had a lot of trash originally, like the broken window, um, just a bunch of pieces of broken glass and boards that had been picked up. Um, so I, I can honestly say I could, I could tell she had put forth effort and I was seeing her house on, on a good day. Um, but there were still some, some concerns like the outlets, the bathroom wasn't completed. The floor did have soft spots. Um, and then, like I said, there were still those small issues where you could see through to the bottom. Um, and then the steps, and these are all things that I listed out to her that, she stated she would be addressing. Okay. And then recently, when is the last time that you tried to visit her home and inspect the home? Uh, We went out to the home on last Thursday. I think it was the 16th um, for uh, another home visit, myself and Miss Ward uh, to do a walkthrough of the home and she wasn't there. So we weren't granted access to the home at that time. From the outside, I could see that the front door had been replaced since my um, since my previous attempt at a home visit last month, where I found the door half it was open and a portion of it had been punched out or kicked out or just was missing, um, and the door looked like it was just propped up. It wasn't actually attached to the door frame itself. Um, so when I had gone that month, there was also a, I think a, a an old refrigerator, a crib some other items that had been moved, but there were still pieces of wood and pieces of nail um, just in the front. That's, that's as far as we made it. We didn't go any further as um, Miss Herminia was there and did not give us access to go into the home to inspect it. Okay. So on March 16th, did you actually schedule that home visit with Miss Samantha Soto? 
Yes, ma'am. We were going at that day and at that time. I'm going to let me ask some questions. Okay. Okay, Um, And um, what time was your scheduled appointment with her? At 4 p.m. Okay. And did she call you to tell you at any point that she wouldn't be there? She did not call me until I already arrived at 345 for the visit that she wasn't going to be there. And at 345, um, what did she tell you? Uh, She stated that she was on her way to the emergency room, that she was in a lot of pain. She believed it to be her kidneys and she would like to reschedule. Okay. And um, did you reschedule? Uh, I have attempted to reschedule with her. I told her the last day that I was able to go and inspect the home before being able to speak about it in court would have been yesterday. Um, But she stated yesterday the home is still not ready and she would let me know when it was ready. Okay. Were you surprised today by Officer Talaferro's um, testimony about the same day you tried attempted a visit at the home? I was, yes. Um, Since we were supposed to be scheduled that day to visit her, um, set set up by her request at that time, and um, then she wasn't there, especially I had received a call earlier that day from her um, stating uh, probably around 2.15 that she would be there. She had a neighbor. Uh, she left a message with her neighbor to let make sure to let me know that she was going to be home. So it, it was a, a bit of a surprise. OK. And was it all was it also a surprise to you that um, that the mother and Mr. Maynard were in the same home? Objection leading. Okay. Um, I'll rephrase. Um, have you asked Samantha Soto about Dustin Maynard? Yes, ma'am. Have you asked her about his whereabouts? Yes, ma'am. And what, um, what has she told you about his whereabouts? She has maintained for the duration of the case that she does not know where he's at. Okay. And um, have you asked her about her relationship status with him? Yes, ma'am. And what has she told you about that? She stated that he did not, he did not want to be involved in a CPS case. And if he wasn't going to help her get her children back, then she had no use for him and they were not together. Okay. Has she maintained throughout this entire case that she's not seeing him? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Were there allegations in this case of domestic violence between the two? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Was that one of the concerns and, you know, classes that she had to take for CPS? Yes, ma'am, it was. Okay. So is it fair to say that to this day, you don't know um, whether her house is appropriate and safe for the children? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, um, did you, did you, I wanted to say draft a service plan for Miss Samantha Soto Franco? Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay. And was that filed with the court? It was. Okay. And did the court make that an order of the court? It, it did. Okay. Um, and then later there was a mediation in this case. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember the date of that? I believe oh, the 9th of January or February. I'm sorry, I forget the exact month, but because we, we had two of those, I think the initial one was in January. Be here. Would it surprise you? Does it sound more accurate that it was um, the beginning of December? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and at that mediation, we came to an agreement. Is that correct? Yes. And we modified mom's service plan. Is that right? Yes, we did. Um, and did we try to tailor it to mom's needs? Yes. Okay. Um, was she supposed to do a parenting class, um, for protective parenting, nurturing parenting and caring for children with autism? Yes. Okay. Do you know if she has taken any of those classes? Uh, to my knowledge, she has not taken any. Okay. Did she do some classes through the parenting Pregnancy center? She did. Um, Did she she take any parenting classes through them? She took a few um, in the very beginning of the case, um, particularly 
geared towards children with autism. Um, also for children that uh, just kind of like strong-willed children and how to um, how to redirect them. And then she took um, how, budgeting 101, domestic violence. Um, also took how basically like home health. Um, so not like what you're thinking of home health. It was more about how to maintain your home and how to maintain your personal hygiene. So she did all those in the very beginning uh, when the case first started. Okay. Um, did she need a class on personal hygiene? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And why do you believe that? She had um, all, actually every, all of the kids herself and her mother were infested with head lice when the children came into care. Okay. So Samantha was supposed to complete a domestic violence class um, that would be inc- incorporated in individual therapy. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Did she begin individual therapy? She did not begin individual therapy with a licensed therapist. She took classes through the um, the pregnancy advocacy center or the Highland Lakes, excuse me, pregnancy center. Um, and she did do a domestic violence class at that time with them. They just, they are volunteers. Okay. Um, did you believe that she needed some additional classes? Yes, ma'am. Um, now she was, was she supposed to participate in individual therapy? Yes. Okay. And did she do that? No, she has not. Did you set her up with a therapist? Yes, ma'am. What efforts did you make to ensure that she was able to participate in therapy? Um, I gave her the information I offered. Um, I sent it to her phone, the last phone number I had working for her, to her mother's phone. And then I also reached out to her friend that would assist her. Um, And then I also offered to take her if she needed or if she needed help getting set up. And then the therapist that I set her up with said that she also does home visits uh, because I let her know that Samantha had difficulty with finding rides and she had trouble with maintaining a consistent phone number. Um, So she said that was not a problem that she could absolutely do a home visit. Okay. And do you know if that therapy ever began? To my knowledge, it has not started. Let's see here visits they she had visits let's see here did she have a holiday visit as um as we agreed at the mediation for christmas she ended up not um having a visit at that time because she came back with a positive result on her um drug test okay um was she supposed to continue drug testing weekly yes ma'am okay and she was supposed to be testing negative is that right Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, it was also, we agreed that she, that Samantha must maintain a clean and hazard free home, free of any infestations. Um, has she done that? So I haven't been able to go on the inside, but I would say from the last visit that it was not ready. The home was not complete. Okay. And um, did you offer her any assistance um, with that? I did. Um, in the beginning when, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, what did you offer to help her with? Um, I asked her if she wanted to see if we could get some referrals for cleaning services or for, um, for like for a pest control to come out. Um, I asked her if there was anything that she wanted, you know, if there was somebody that she knew of that maybe we could contact that maybe we could get some assistance from concrete services to help out. And she declined stating that she had help with her family and she would let me know if she needed it, but her fam, her and her family would take care of it. Okay. Now at the mediation, um, in order to comply with the ADA, um, we had some other suggestions, not necessarily, not necessarily required things for her to complete, um, just to try to help her out. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, and one of those was to attain a shepherd at the Highland crisis network. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did that ever happen? It did not. I did reach out to um, Ms. Pat and she stated she had been in contact. Okay. Did you make any efforts to reach out to the Highland Highland Lakes Crisis Network um, to get assistance for Samantha? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, did that go anywhere? 
she stated she is still willing to work with her if myself or Miss Ward would like to um, accompany her in order to complete the program and to assist her. May I get clarification about who she is? I'm not. Un- I, I, heard, I thought she was talking about Samantha, but I'm unclear, and it may have, and I may have an objection as to hearsay. It, I was referring to um, Pat I, Hatch, I believe is her last name. Okay, then I object to that entire response as to hearsay. This guy. Okay. So, Miss Henry, if you would just listen to my question and only answer mm-hmm. uh, the question, okay? Um, yes, so. Did anything become of the Shepherd program with the Highland Lakes Crisis Network? No. Okay. Um, if she was supposed to attend pregnancy resource classes as requested by the department, did she do that? She did take some classes in Jan- last taken in January. Okay. Um, it stated that she could obtain an autism spectrum disorder assessment. Did you try to set her up with that? Uh, No, ma'am, I did not set her up with that. I wasn't able to reach her. Okay. Did you look into the program or into the assessment? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, Has communication been a problem in this case between you and Ms. Samantha Franco Soto? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And why do you believe that is? Her number changes often. Um, She also has stated they have poor service, problems with the carrier, Um, So it's been very inconsistent. Sometimes she has a phone, other times she does not. Okay. Um, The other, the last requirement and not necessarily for, um, it wasn't court ordered, but we were supposed to, she was supposed to work towards obtaining an official ID and a social security disability. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Do you know if she was able to do that? To my knowledge, she has not. Okay. Did you offer to assist her in um, in obtaining those things? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, what did you offer to help her with? I told her I could help her fill out the paperwork. We could meet and talk about it. I could give her a ride. Um, and again, she stated that she had her family um, and they would be assisting her. Okay. And and what we just talked about, those were the services that became, that kind of replaced her original family plan of service. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, I feel like you've made every reasonable effort or have gone above and beyond to try to assist Miss Samantha Soto Franco. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, did she take a psychological for the department? Yes, she did. Okay. And as we, as we heard before, is it, does she have a low IQ? Objection uh, hearsay. Objection hearsay. Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm, I'm gonna overrule that one. Uh, the psych- Go ahead. Did she have a low IQ? Uh, yes, ma'am. It came back as a 64 as an overall IQ, which was in, um, graded as extremely low one percentile. Okay. And um, if you know or not, do you know if she needed assistance um, understanding the questions during her psychological? Your Honor, again, yes. I'm going to object to hearsay. I believe that anything in the psychological, the psychological itself would be best evidence. I have not received a business records affidavit or anything else indicating that the psychological is coming in, but Ms. Vanna could have um, subpoenaed the provider who provided the psychological. Um, anything written in that psychological is hearsay. I'm going to sustain your objection based upon how the question was worded. Okay. Now, um, I'm, I'm going to move on, Ms. Henry, okay? Yes, So, ma'am. Um, do you believe that um, Ms. Samantha Soto has a mental deficiency or incapacity to care for the kids long-term? Objection, speculation, and also that question calls for an expert witness. Ms. Henry is not an expert in that field. Okay. And, Judge, I would argue yes, that... That was what you would you say? I'm sorry. Me? Yeah, you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, I was going to say that Ms. Carrie Ward um has uh, made an argument regarding the ADA and her and has opened the door to that. Um, she has also argued that she needed an, an extension in order to um due to her client's mental deficiencies. And, and none of that, Your Honor, none of that had to do with an inability to care for the children. It had to do with the ADA requirements 
And it's Ms. Vanna's burden to prove her pleadings. And if she wanted to bring a professional in who is licensed and eligible as a, an expert in that field, she could have done so. She set this trial. Uh, it's, it's objections overruled. She can answer the question. You might um, want to say it again, Ms. Vanna. Yes. Uh, Ms. Henry, um, do you believe that Ms. Samantha Franco Soto has a mental deficiency um, that would prevent her from providing for her children until their 18th birthday or taking care of them? Yes. Okay. And um, have you observed visits between Ms. Samantha Franco Soto and the children? Yes, I have. Has she been able to show you what she has learned um, at these at the pregnancy center during the parenting class from the parenting class? She struggled during the visits, and I actually had to um, have a conversation with her after the visits and sometimes before just reminding her um, that Bradley requires a specific type of environment to remain calm. Um, her tone of voice, the level of volume, and then the toys that are available to him. Um, we also talked about being able to spend time equally with the children. Uh, she was tending to focus on specific children. And it was very evident from, from, from Leah particularly that she felt left out of the visit. So I don't think an observation of the visit that she could apply those those courses on her own because we continue to have to give her feedback and structure of what how she needed to interact with the children. Is Rhonda the youngest child? For this cause number, yes. Yes, in this case. Yes. <laughs> and um, how does Rhonda react to visits with um, Miss Soto Franco? She, um, she gets very upset. And as soon as she steps foot into the building, she begins crying very loudly and clinging to her caregiver. Um, and it takes her the better part of a two hour visit to calm down and to interact. Um, we have seen her when she sets sight on Miss Soto coming into the visitation room where she has lunged at her and scratched down her face and pulled her hair. Um, so she gets very, very upset. And how does Miss Franco Soto um, redirect that behavior? How does she handle it? Um, she tries talking to her and telling her, you know, you know, just kind of like dancing around and talking with her. And then if she can't calm her down, she'll pass her to Miss Herminia um, and allow her to calm down with her. And that's usually what happens is that Miss Herminia will spend the first hour kind of calming her down. And then eventually uh, Rhonda will begin interacting with the other children. Okay. Um, where are the children? Are the children placed all together? No, ma'am. Okay. How many separate homes are they in? Uh, three currently. Okay. Um, are they with relatives? Uh, Four of the children are, or for, for this case, three of the children, excuse me. Okay. And who is not with a relative? Which child? Bradley is in a foster home. Okay. And why is Bradley in a foster home and not with one of the relatives that has the other children? Uh, Bradley, uh, Bradley is on uh, the autism spectrum and he has a lot of needs. So he needed to be in a therapeutic home that could meet those needs. And unfortunately, at the time, there wasn't um, a family member or relative friend that could meet his needs. Okay. Um, do all of the families interact together? They do. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do they communicate about the children? Yes, ma'am. Um, what about Bradley's foster parent? They do. They have a group chat that um, they're on and they send updates, photos, how the kids are doing. They celebrate successes. Um, so they just kind of keep up with each other like that outside of the visits. Okay. Um, now let's talk about um, Mr. Dustin Maynard briefly. 
um, he was served in this case. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And he was, he is the acknowledged father because he's on the birth certificate for Bradley and Rhonda. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And did you create a service plan for him? Yes, ma'am. Was that made an order of the court? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. And what types of services um, were on his service plan? Um, he was supposed to submit to OSAR drug weekly drug test um, and then follow the recommendations of his OSAR um, individual counseling. And then I believe we also were asking for him to um, sign up for um, like for family violence and uh, protective parenting and positive parenting. Okay. And um, has he done any of his services? No, ma'am. Okay. Has he reached out to the department? Not once. Okay. And what efforts have you made to locate him and engage him in services? Um, I go by the reported, his reported address uh, once a month. Um, I've also, I also checked for him at um, Miss Soto's residence. I've left my business card almost every time I've gone out and spoken to his family. Um, and then I've also talked with, um, with Samantha multiple times and asked her if she had any contact information for him or knew where I could find him. And did she ever give you that information or his contact info? Uh, and the very, probably the first month of having the case, she provided a phone number for him. Um, and I think it worked briefly and then didn't work anymore after that. Were there any orders for visitation for um, Mr. Dustin Maynard? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, did he have to show up to court and begin engaging in services to have visits? Yes. Okay. Did he take the opportunity to engage in services and come to court in order to see his kids? No. Okay. Has he had any visits with his children, um, meaning um, Bradley and Rhonda since the beginning of this case? No, ma'am. Now for the unknown father, did you do a diligent search for the unknown father of Logan and Catalea? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, did you file your report with the court? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you were unable to find him. Is that right? Correct. Do you believe it's in the best interest of the children to terminate the parental rights between the children and Miss Samantha? Yes. And why do you believe that's in their best interest? I believe that the kids deserve to be in an environment that is safe, predictable, can meet their basic needs and provide them with the support to do well in school, to feel confident, just going to school clean and having had a meal, uh, having some predictability in their routine, knowing every day they're going to leave at this time, go to school, come home at this time, and there will be somebody there for them. Um, I think they deserve to have somebody take them to therapy so that they can have the best chance, no matter how slim it may be for them. I think that we should provide them with all the opportunities and services that they should have had from day one. And do you believe that they would have those opportunities with um, the mother? I do not. Okay. Um, And what about the um, the father of Rhonda and Bradley, Mr. Dustin Maynard? Do you believe his rights should be terminated? I believe they should. Okay. And, and why? He's not been present and he's not made any attempt to come and seek out his children to do any work, to have them be a part of his life. Uh, and just multiple reports from his own family. Um, stating that he is a violent and aggressive person. So I would actually fear for the safety of the kids in his presence. Okay. Um, I'll pass the witness. Ms. Warren, any questions? At the beginning of this case, when you first went out to the house, um, there, let me see. You said that you were concerned that there were cockroaches, right? Yes. And now there are not cockroaches the last time you went out, right? Correct. The, back in November. Okay. 
Um, well, the last was that the last time you entered the home was in November. That's the last time I've been able to enter the home. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you haven't seen cockroaches since then, right? No. Um, so you said that there were missing outlet covers. Have those been replaced? I haven't been allowed back in the home to to verify. Okay, so the last time you were there, they were still missing. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You also um, expressed concerns when we arrived um, last week. You would you agree that you expressed a concern that the driveway typically had nails and glass in it, and so not you actually advised me not to pull my car too far up. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Um, would you agree with the assessment that there weren't really any nails or glass in the driveway anymore? I would say there was in the driveway, no. Okay. So you're saying you did see nails and glass somewhere? Uh, still up by the front porch. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, it was substantially cleaned up from the last time though, right? Yes, ma'am. From the outside, it, there were the large objects had been removed. And the door had been changed. Okay. So they've gotten a new door. They've gotten rid of roaches. They've changed carpet, right? Yes, ma'am. Um, you talked about a bathroom that wasn't operating, but I'm assuming that wasn't the only bathroom in the home, right? Uh, no, there was a second bathroom. Okay. So th so they, it, it wasn't that they were without a bathroom, a working restroom. Correct. So okay. also when we were there... And I was attempting to get uh, Samantha's mother to let us in the home. You actually said, no, if Samantha's not here, we're not going in, right? I said I didn't feel comfortable going without Samantha's permission. Okay, right. So it, it's possible that her mother would have given us permission to go in the home, right? She said no. Okay. Samantha hasn't had a phone of her own throughout the, throughout the duration of this case, right? I think in the very beginning she had one, but not since maybe the first couple of months. And for some time she was using her mother's phone as her primary number, right? Yes, ma'am. And now her mother no longer is residing in her residence. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And her reason for not having a phone, would you agree, is likely due to poverty? Um, yes. Okay. So the fact that you can't reach her very often is more poverty related than because she doesn't, isn't trying or isn't working with you. Is that right? I would say no. So you think that she can afford a phone? She has other people that she has asked me to contact on her behalf to find her. So I'm not saying that she has to have a phone, but she had other people that I could reach out to for her to communicate with me through. Um, and that hasn't changed since the start of the case. And have you been doing that? Yes, ma'am. Do you know if the service providers that have been unable to begin service services with her have had all the phone numbers of the various neighbors to get in touch with her? They've had um, her boss's number, which has stayed on pretty consistent. Um, then she, they've had her mother's number. And I've also provided Miss Soto with those numbers in return. And Samantha has a lot of support through family and family friends. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And do you agree that that, that, the family, friends, and family um, are would be a strong support for um, helping her with meeting the children's needs? Yes. You talked a lot about the children's reaction to Samantha, but isn't it true that the department denied her access for the first six months of this case? So initially, she was not allowed visitation. Objection non-responsive. It was a yes or no question. Just yes. Yeah. Isn't it true that the department denied access for the first six months of this case? 
I don't know if it's exactly six okay. months. Okay. So five or six months, somewhere in there. I believe it was four. Okay. So for four months, she didn't see these young children. And now does it seem reasonable and fair that the department's going to hold it against her, that they have a reaction to her? Yes or no? No. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Anybody else? Ms. Uh, Cummings, any questions? Ms. Henry? Your Honor. Ms. Uh, Potts? Yes, Your Honor, I have a couple of questions. Ms. Henry, you mentioned that um, Ms. Soto tested positive for a drug in December. Was that just um, obje objection? First of all, there was no statement of that. Second of all, anything about drug tests is hearsay. Uh, Your Honor, I'm sorry. I thought I heard her testify that she tested positive in December. There were tests, there were, there were missed test results, but there was nothing about any positive test, and that is absolutely improper. Okay, sustain. <laughs> okay, I apologize. I thought I remembered that being testified to. Okay. When was the last time that Ms. Soto tested for drugs? January 23rd. Okay. When was the last time she tested before January 23rd? I'm sorry, can I just ask for clarification? Are you asking when was the last time she drug tested for the department? For the department or, prior to January 23rd. Um, I'm trying to think. So she tested off and on through January and some in December. Okay. Was she on a regular color where she was supposed to testify weekly? Test yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Did she test weekly during she, the case? She did. She tested very consistent up and through November. Um, and then November, December, January, um, that's her testing was inconsistent. Okay. Did you ask her why her testing wasn't consistent? She's yes, ma'am. And what did she say? She stated that she had a difficult time getting off of work or she just forgot, or she was just very, um, overwhelmed with other things at the time. Okay, thank you. Do you feel like you provided uh, reasonable accommodations for Ms. Soto's um, disability? Yes, ma'am. What was Ms. Soto's disability? She has an intellectual disability. Um, so to use her own words, she um, has a hard time reading and understanding documents which is why she typically likes to have somebody else present to help her um, understand what's happening or what's being said. Okay, thank you. No further questions. Anybody else, any question, Ms. Henry? Yes, Your Honor, a few follow up. Okay. Um, Ms. Um, Henry, do you know the address, mom's address? Bills. Okay, and um, you stated, did you state that her phone issues were due to poverty? Yes. Okay. Does she have a job? She does. And how much does she make weekly? So according to her um, employer, it can vary, but she can make up to 300. Objection is hearsay. If it didn't come from Samantha, it's hearsay. It's just saying. Okay. Um, but you know that she works. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And um, Ms. Samantha Soto, um, she gave you the number to her boss. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you were able to verify employment with him? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what does she do? Uh, she stated that they clean houses or in various different jobs. Okay. And did um, Miss Samantha Franco Soto tell you um, how much she works? She stated that her hours vary depending on what jobs are available. Okay. Did she tell you how much she makes? She said that she can make anywhere from 240 to 300 per week. And do you know how she gets paid? I believe cash. When you were asked if you, the department denied access um, to the children for the mother, um, you stated for four months. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, last summer, um, visits were reinstated. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. 
Um, and why did the department not allow the mother to have visits um, at the beginning? For fear of reinfestation of lice with the kids, they had all been cleared and she and um, her mother still had head lice at that time. Okay. And after about four months, did the department come up with a plan in order to allow her to have visits with the kids? Yes. Okay. And um, you're not faulting her for the reactions of the children to her, are you? No. Okay. Um, the big question is, do you think that she is able to um, use her learned skills from the classes during the visits? No. Okay. And have you witnessed that yourself? Yes. Okay. Um, no further questions of this witness. Um, let me, Miss Henry, I have just a couple of questions. Um, this home that Miss uh, Soto Franco lives in is in Granite Shoals, correct? Yes, ma'am. And when you've been at the home, have you been able to communicate on your cell phone? Yes, ma'am. So connectivity wasn't an issue for you? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, has she had the same job throughout the pendency of this case? Yes, ma'am. And have you talked to her boss on his cell phone? Yes, ma'am. Or a phone, I guess. Something. Yes, ma'am. Uh, does Mr. Maynard work with her? Or does he do something else? Or do you even know? I I'm unaware. Okay. So do you know if he has a cell phone? The last number I had from him was no longer in service. So I don't know if there's a new one. Okay. Well, you, you keep referring to a lady. I think it's Herminia. Is that a name? Yes, ma'am. That's um, Samantha's mother. Okay. I was just unclear who she was. And where does Herminia live? Um, Herminia states that she stays with um, her boyfriend and she visits the home often. Husband, sorry. Um, and he, she frequents the home often. She was living with her, but moved out recently, has been staying more with him. You said she was living with her. Living with, with Samantha. Her. Excuse Samantha. me. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Does Herminia have a cell phone? Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. Now there's this house in Granite Shoals. Um, is there any family members that live nearby or is it just like this one home? Um, no, there's lots of, she has a neighbor that's just a few feet away on the same city square. And you don't know what Mr. Duster Maynard does for a living? No, ma'am. According, according to his family, he does not work. Okay. Okay. I don't have anything else. Anybody have any more questions, Ms. Henry? No, you're on. Okay, we'll take a break. I'm gonna call Ms. Donna Shahan. Okay, she's been sworn. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um Ms. Shahan, how long have you been on this case as an advocate? Since November. Okay. And have you had any interaction with um, Ms., with the mother, Ms. Samantha Soto Franco? No, ma'am, I have not. Okay. Have you made any attempts to reach out to her or have contact with her? Yes, I called the number that I have on file twice with no response. Okay. Were you able to leave a voice message? No, ma'am. Okay. Did you text that number? No, ma'am. Okay. Have you gone out to her house? No, ma'am. Okay. Did, um, how often have you visited the children? Um, three or four times. Okay. When is the last time you visited? Uh, about a month ago, we went to Temple. Okay. And... Can you tell me a little bit about how the children are doing in their placements? They're doing well. Um, the two little ones are with Miranda and they are doing great. Uh, Rhonda is very, very attached to uh, Miranda. And of course the baby is just four months old. So, you know, she's, she's not quite as bonded, but Rhonda obviously has a very strong bond with her. Uh, Bradley's doing great. Um, I've seen improvement, in, so much improvement in him each and every time I see him. And um, uh, I just, I think they're doing well in their placement. Does Bradley have any special needs? Yes. Okay. And what are those special needs? 
he is on the autism spectrum and he has um, occupational therapy. He has, and also he has uh, glasses because he has an issue with um, his sight and he is uh, occupational therapy, physical therapy. I don't remember. He goes to every kind of therapy you can imagine. They, they spend most of their time on the road back and forth to therapy. And do you believe that um, if the children were placed back with Miss Samantha Franco Soto, that she would have the ability um, to care for um, Bradley and make sure he has all the resources he needs? No, ma'am. Okay. And why do you believe that? I just think that um, she doesn't have transportation for one and I'm um, not sure that she, I mean, she doesn't even show up for court or do what she's supposed to do. Hasn't, you know, attempted to, to do anything to get her kids back. So I don't feel like once she, if she were to get them back, that she would uh, have the ability to get them, get him all the stuff that he needs, which is a lot. Do you believe that her support system, her family would be able to help her with um, transportation and making sure he gets to all of his appointments? I'm not sure about that. Okay. Um, from what you have seen in this case, um, do you um, believe that they would be able to assist her with that? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, I'll pass the witness. Anybody have any questions, Ms. Shahan? No. No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Next witness. Very, please. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I was trying to get my mute button. Um, very briefly. <laughs> okay. I never did get the mute button. Um, now I got it. Um, so you have never met with Samantha. Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. Okay, pass the window. Oh, wait, not yet. Are you familiar with uh, guardian ad litem rule? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. Have you been trained by CASA on how to effectively be a guardian ad litem and what the law requires of a guardian ad litem? Yes, ma'am. Are you aware that one of your obligations is to meet with the parent? Yes, ma'am. I'll pass the witness. Anybody else? Any questions, Ms. Shahan? Yes, um, Ms. Um, Shahan, have you um, observed Ms. Samantha Soto during any visits with the children? No, ma'am. Okay, no further questions. Um, Ms. Welch, are you the CASA supervisor in this case? Yes, ma'am. And at one point, were you also the advocate? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Have you been with this family since the beginning of this case? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Have you ever met with Miss Samantha Soto? Yes, twice. Okay. And when was that? Um, both at visits. Okay. So you have observed visits between her and the children? Yes. Okay. Have you been able to speak with, with the mother, Samantha, um, without the children? Uh, in the hallway. Okay. And what, I guess, what types of things did you discuss in the hallway briefly? Uh, I did talk to her about like, you know, uh, how her job was going, her, you know, how she felt the visit went with the children. Um, and uh, also too, I confirmed with her whether or not she had um, seen the dad recently or any of the dads. Okay. And what would her response be to you? Uh, she stated no, that she was what did hadn't seen or doesn't know about where specifically Dustin was. And uh, I said, Are you, you're not in a relationship or anything. She specifically said no. Okay. Um, did you talk to her about her parenting skills or anything like that? Um, no, not not in terms of, hey, how, you know, how, how do you feel parenting went? Nothing like that. No. Okay. Um, did you ever, when you observed the visits, did you ever have any concerns or did you have to redirect her? Uh, I, there were a couple times when I had to, um, redirect, um, because you, there's, there would be like, um, there was five children in the room with her, you know, and they were, um, if they were fighting about a toy or something, you know. Okay. Did she not know how to redirect the children when they were fighting over a toy? I, I think, uh, what I observed was that, you know, she wasn't sure, she wasn't sure what to, what to say, you know, she did do the best she could, but I think she um, wasn't sure exactly how to do that. And, and she realized that she was being observed too. So 
I think she's really a little nervous. Okay. Um, do you think that it's in the best interest to terminate her parental rights um, as to the children? Yes, I do believe that it would be uh, in the best interest of the children. And why do you believe that? Each of the uh, four children, um, when I had uh, met with them and I've seen them across the time, have had uh, particular issues, either there have been health issues or behavior issues. And when I first met all of them, um, compared to what I have observed in them recently, they both, they've all four come a, a long way. Um, <clears throat> one thing that was uniform between all four of these children was um, they uh, they never got like an, enough to eat. They had this vora voracious appetite where like, you know, wherever, whenever they were like um, um, sitting down to eat, it was just like, you know, I better take care, I better eat this now kind of thing. And so there's this sort of immediate kind of frenzy. Um, and you can sometimes from time to time still see that uh, with Bradley. The other thing is um, the reaction that these children have um, to their moms. They each have a little bit different reaction whenever they see their mother um, from Rhonda, who uh, basically she loses it for the first 15 minutes, you know, and there is this, this huge uh, issue about getting separated from um, her current caretaker, or her current placement, and, and trying to kind of then acclimate to the room. Uh, actually, got caught in the middle of it once and lost some hair. Um, Bradley, um, uh, you know, because of his, um, he, it takes him a little while to kind of get comfortable in the situation, but yet, you know, he sort of walks the perimeter. Uh, Leia, in terms of her relationship with mom, she'll interact, but then she immediately goes off to the side of the room and will interact on her own. Uh, she doesn't really engage very much. And Logan doesn't really engage with his mom, but he does engage with her, with the grandma. Okay. I'll pass the witness. Okay, thank you. Go on. Um, Ms. Welch, how often did you see the children in this case? Mm, I saw them um, at least once a month, if not more often. Okay. Can you tell me about the specific medical needs of Bradley? Um, so Bradley, um, he has uh, issues with his vision and the prognosis of that eventually, um, he's, he is considered near legally blind at this point, but eventually he will, um, the prognosis, he might go completely blind. Okay. Um, the other thing he is, uh, has, he is on the spectrum and autism, and he also does have uh, issues with speech. Uh, and then uh, lastly, he does have some uh, structural issues with his legs uh, uh, he had, uh, that he's had since birth, uh, that he was in a cast uh, when he was probably about a year old uh, and needed to have follow-up, that that did not occur. So the issue sort of um, went back um, to that rotation. And so uh, they had to have that corrected. So now he wears special orthotics and he does go to occupational uh, and physical therapy uh, once a week. And he goes to speech therapy once a week um, to help him um, with um, learning speech. We're hoping that maybe within a year's time frame, he'll be able to actually say words, a few words. Do you think his medical needs were met when he was in the care of his mother? None, no. Are his medical needs being met now? Yes. And it's my understanding, in fact, he, he had a need to be placed with foster parents, both of whom are nurses. Is, is that correct? Correct. Do you believe that, that uh, Ms. Soto could take care of Bradley's medical needs going forward if her rights were not terminated? No. Do you see any reason why Ms. Soto should have visits with Bradley going forward? Uh, no, I don't. I don't see why she need there. There would be for either for on, from Bradley's perspective. Okay. Can you tell us about the medical needs of Catalea? Uh, Catalea was experiencing these moments where she would just kind of freeze up, and so they were they were looking at the possibility of her having what's called uh, petty mall seizures. 
for these seizures that just occur in a short burst of time. And so they were observed at school, they were observed at home, and I actually witnessed it myself as well uh, during the communication with her. Um, so uh, they did indeed have her go to a, uh, have an MRI, both with contrast and without. And then she was uh, then followed up with the neural um, um, neurosurgeon. And uh, they weren't able to find anything conclusive at this time, but uh, he didn't make a diagnosis of anything. He said, we probably need to go so for some further tests just to make sure. However, it was it has been noted um, by school and as well by placement that it seems like those episodes um, aren't necessarily occurring as frequently uh, as they had earlier. So we're hoping that that's not a long, you know, that's something that can be addressed. Can you tell me about um, Logan's uh, reactions, uh, physical, what was happening after his visits with his mother? So um, Logan well, has had, uh, uh, when, he, when, we were, when he was first uh, placed, one of the issues that was, he was having problems with is echopresis. Uh, uh, and that is where he was actually having issues with um, um, defecation. Okay. And that's a response basically to stress. And there's, it, it could be all kinds of indications uh, from what uh, I've been told. Um, and after the most recent visit, um, this started again. Um, and uh, um, he had, he had gone through 25 underwear in a week he's trying to hide it because he gets embarrassed about it but it's it's something that he's been going through so we've all of us including this cps and placement all of us including donna have been trying to work to kind of uh with therapy to kind of get a path that it seems like it's improving um but it does seem to happen um immediately after the visit do you believe that miss socho would be able to take care of the various emotional and physical needs of her children uh, no, I don't believe that um, she will be able to do that. Do you have an opinion about whether or not it would be in the best interest of the children to have Ms. Soto's rights terminated? I think it would be in the children's best interest if her rights were terminated. Thank you. No further questions. Anybody else? Any questions, Ms. Welch? Just one follow-up, Judge. Thank you. Um, Ms. Welch, what is a plan for the children in the future um, as to permanency? My, parental rights are terminated. Uh, my understanding is for Logan and Ketalea in, um, in, in conversations with um, placement that uh, they would like, they would, to take care of them, they would adopt them. And in discussions with Ms. Uh, Miranda, who's the placement for uh, Rhonda, uh, that um, she would indeed like to adopt Rhonda. And in discussions with the placement for Bradley, um, they are not um, foster to adopt, even though that's not the right term, my understanding is, but they are um, a therapeutic care only. But there was conversation and there's a lovely family who have already have uh, interactions and relationship with Bradley um, that we met with um, and that they were very interested in and would like to adopt him. Okay, great. And actually, this will be just the last one. Um, do you know if Miss Soto Franco um, was supposed to stay away from Mr. Um, Maynard during this case? Um, my understanding uh, that she was indeed supposed to uh, stay away from him. Okay, no further questions. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Uh, next witness, Miss Fanna. Um, no more, no, excuse me, no more witnesses, Judge. Thank you. Um, Ms. Ward, any witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. Ms. Cummings, any witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Potts, any witnesses? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, well, I'm happy to hear from everybody. Ms. Fanna, you may begin. Judge, um, I'm going to reserve my closing argument. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ward. Your Honor, I, I'm asking that you um, preserve my client's parental rights. Um, she, the department has not, first of all, the, part, the department has not proven um, that there has been any endangerment uh, in this case. They did not offer anything regarding um, uh, 
<laughs> what was going on at the time of the removal, simply allegations, not anything pertaining to the uh, to the um, investigation itself. Um, it alluded to some concerns, but nothing involving any evidence of any um, actual endangerment. So I'm asking that the that the court not find uh, D or E grounds. Um, with regard to the O ground, Your Honor, my client um, has been unable to comply with the services. Um, you heard testimony regarding her poverty issues. Um, she has transportation issues. She has um, no phone. Um, it's been it's been impossible for her to com to completely comply with the services. You did hear that she uh, early in the case was was able to engage in some of the services. I think at that time her mother was living with her. Um, then you heard testimony that she, her mother is no longer living with her. So that took away one of those resources. Um, Your Honor, with regard to um, the inability to care ground, you've heard no expert testimony indicating that my client's unable to care for the children until the age of 18. Additionally, that ground requires that they're unable to care for the child even with the help of family and friends. And Ms. Henry's testimony specifically said that family and friends are able to help her and make it easier for her to parent. So that so the department has completely failed to prove any grounds for termination of parental rights. Uh, I believe that the end ground was also pled. Um, you heard no testimony about it. In fact, you heard testimony that she has been visiting um, and you heard testimony regarding the visit. So there's there there have been no grounds um, for termination um, that have been thoroughly alleged, certainly not proven um, by clear and convincing evidence. Um, Your Honor, with regard to the best interest, you, you've heard that Bradley's not in an adoptive home that's kind of in the air. There's a possibility of a family that might be interested in adopting him. That's great. We don't have um, any concrete plan for him. All of the other children are with family members. So there would be no reason to or no need to adopt, uh, to do adoption. Um, Your Honor, I'm asking that you preserve parental rights, uh, do PMC to the department. We can um, either continue to work on services or uh, work out PMC to the family members of the of the children who are with family members. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ward. Ms. Cummings. Your Honor, I do not have a closing argument. I would just like to pass if that's possible. Okay, thank you. Ms. Potts. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I, I believe that the testimony clearly shows that the best interest of the children would be to terminate the parental rights, that they would be in danger if they were returned to their mother. She was unable previously to take care of their medical and emotional needs, even their hygienic needs. Um, she would still be unable to do that um, to date. The children are having severe reactions after even having visited with their mother. They need permanency. Um, they have the department and the uh, families uh, have good um, plans for the children going forward. If Miss Soto uh, remains clean and, and is appropriate, then certainly the family members can allow visits with the children if they should so desire, but the children need permanency. They need to be able to be adopted. They need to be able to move forward and do the things that, that the kids need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Vanna. Thank you, Your Honor. Excuse me, Ms. Vanna. Thank you. Um, Judge, the department requests that the court um, terminate the parental rights of Ms. Samantha Soto based on um, D, E, and O grounds. Specifically, um, Ms. Ward stated that there was no evidence that um, endangering grounds. However, um, there are court orders. This court took judicial notice of its file um, that there was a temporary order following an adversary hearing where the court removed the children, um, that it was not safe for the kids to be home at that time. You heard testimony from Ms. Maria Henry about the home conditions even after the removal where there were soft spots in the floor. There were um, holes in the floor where you could see to the bottom to the ground. Um, a child's arm or leg could get st stuck in there if they're not paying attention where they're going. She stated that that the last time she visited in November when she was actually allowed entrance into the home, that it still smelled of urine in the home, a little bit of feces, and that all of the concerns were not alleviated. And that is, those conditions are endangering to a child. Um, furthermore, um, regarding the E, ground endangering conduct, knowingly placing a child with persons who engage in conduct, which endanger the, the child, um, Case law have 
through the testimony, I think that the court, um, that there's enough evidence that Ms. Samantha Soto is not stable. She doesn't have stability in her life. She is unable to um, oftentimes care for herself, let alone the children. And there is case law that states that instability in a parent's life um, can be endangering to the child. And I would argue that in this case, that would be the case. Um, the department has offered Ms. Samantha Soto they have gone above and beyond. They have offered to drive her to therapies. They have offered to do paperwork with her. They have offered to call and set up her, the appointments with her. And um, so she cannot argue that it's not due to her own fault that she was unable to comply with the services because she declined the help from the department. Um, it's not very often that we have a caseworker that's offering to drive um, someone to services, offering to make the appointments, um, you heard the department even had a therapist willing to go to the home of the mother to um, to do the services. And um, you also heard testimony that mother has stayed a consistently stated to the department that she is staying away from um, the father, Dustin Maynard, and that she has no contact with him. She doesn't know where he is. And that on the day that the department on March 16th of 2023, the department was supposed to view her home. That same day, she did not show up for that visit. Um, however, the police were called and found Ms. Samantha Soto Franco, along with Dustin Maynard, in the home um, that Samantha Soto stated that they lived together in her home and um, that he assaulted her. That is also a dangerous situation for the children. Um, I would also add that <clears throat> Officer Talaferro testified that Samantha stated that there was no electricity in the home. Um, that is not stable for the kids and that is not an environment the kids should be in. Um, furthermore, I would argue that she failed to comply with her services, Judge. Um, it's been nine months and she didn't complete them. She did not learn anything from the classes that she took and um, including the drug testing, she stopped drug testing as well. Um, <clears throat> so we ask that you terminate mom's rights on D, E and O. As to Mr. Maynard, he was served with a citation. He has failed to make contact with his attorney, has failed to show up to court, and has been evading every attempt the department has made to reach out to him. We're asking that the court, he also has not visited the children. He had the opportunity to show up to court, engage his services, and have visits with his children, and he failed to do so. So we're asking the court to terminate his parental rights um, as to the N and O ground, the department is not required to um, serve him with citation in that instance. And the department did file a diligent search affidavit. So we're asking the court to terminate the unknown father as to Texas Family Code 161.002 um, and find that the termination of all the parents' parental rights in this case and the unknown father is in the children's best interest. There is a plan for them. Um, You've heard the testimony, Judge, and I, I think I'll rest at that. Okay. Um, I'm going to find by clear and convincing evidence the termination of uh, Ms. Samantha Soto Franco's parental rights as to all four children is in the best interest of the children under section uh, Texas Family Code section 161.001. Uh, <clears throat> 1B in and O grounds and find that termination of Mr. Dustin Maynard's parental rights as to Rhonda and Bradley uh, is in the best interest of children, also under 161.01 B in and out grounds also. I'm going to find the term. Like boy? In, in and E. It, sorry, in and O. In and O. In and O grounds. I, I was hearing, I was hearing B, N and O. Okay, so just N and O. Just in and out. I haven't stopped her father. And I'm sorry, can you repeat the mother's grounds? At 161.001, B1, N, and O. Little B, big N, big O. No D and E. I have a thing going across my eyes right now, and I'm having a hard time. I can't see everything. It's kind of it's weird. It's kind of scary. Um, so both parents, both those parents are terminator under N and O grounds. No D and E. 
as to the unknown father of Captain Lee and Logan find that um, if any parental rights do exist, that they are terminated under Chapter 160 and 161 of the Texas Family Code. Therefore, I find that that is also in the children's best interest, that any uh, parental rights, if any do exist, are terminated as to the unknown father. Um, going to name the department as the permanent managing conservator of all four children. Uh, Ms. Ward, Ms. Dowell, Ms. Cummings, y'all are released from further representation. I'm going to order no placement change without the agreement of the CPS and ad litems. I'm going to have a submission hearing on 4-4, and our first perm after hearing is going to be on 6-20. Okay. Okay, thank you all. Everybody did a good job. appreciate that. appreciate the information on the kiddos. And uh, I will be in recess on this case. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you.